Okay, in a previous video, you saw me post a video blog that was basically recorded at Huntington Beach, California, and it was a short video that asked uh, some of my readers to help me prepare for a panel by posting some comments and giving me some ideas for questions um, that I could ask some panelists on a uh, panel that I was going to be moderating at the Product Camp uh, SoCal Bar Camp on uh, Saturday, November 6th. Um, so what I want to do in this video is uh, actually I had recorded the process of when I edited that other video, I recorded that whole process. Now this video that you're watching right now is not really a tutorial on how to use the software that I use to edit my videos, but rather to give you an overview of some of the steps that I go through for doing this. And you'll see I kind of go through it fairly quickly. Again, it's not a tutorial on how to use this video, but more to eliminate some of the mystery behind creating these things and uh, you can see that as you get some proficiency you can actually get through them pretty quickly okay so this is my desktop on my Macintosh and what I'm gonna do here is find my Camtasia software in the docking station there it is I'm selecting it and a little dialog window is gonna come up that allows me to configure my screen settings and my audio I'm just gonna go and close this out and bring up a new project folder, or I'm sorry, new project uh, file for Camtasia. And this is going to launch a little editing window. On the left here is my assets folder, where I have tr different transitions and filters and so forth. And all I'm going to do is click the import media button that is at the top here. Click that. And that's going to bring up my little window that allows me to navigate to the folder where I have my iPhone video that I have imported into my computer. So there it is. We'll open that guy up and that brings it into my assets uh, bin basically on the left side here. And all I'm going to do now is grab that and drag it down into the timeline section on the bottom here. All right. And then this main area up at the top as you can see is what's called the viewer. As you can see that's so you can view the video. Now in the timeline section here you can see that there's these little squiggly lines and that's basically the audio waveform. That's the visual representation of the spoken word in the video. Now in this middle part, in this viewer section, all I'm doing here now is adjusting the canvas. I usually have my canvas set at 1280 by 720, which is kind of this high definition version of, uh, of the settings. And all I've done here is just basically squish that down to say that I want to adjust it to the size of the video itself, which is more like a standard definition at 640 by 480. Now all I'm doing here is scrubbing into that area where I had let the video run in the beginning. I allowed it to waste some of that video space so because I want to now edit out some of those um, a lot of that dead space in the beginning so again I'm gonna split it at the playhead right by right about where I want it to start there's a little segment there now that I'm just gonna delete that part and when I say ripple delete it basically takes everything to the right and scooches it into the the blank area on the left now that's my starting point right here do a little panning shot and then that's the point where I start talking and you can see where that is in the waveform uh, as well all right, now the next thing I want to do is uh, I usually like to put a little branding in my video because other people can usually take it from my YouTube and take the embed code and embed it into their blog post. And that's fine, but what I want to do is put a little bit of a square here uh, and I'm going to color it up a little bit, but this is going to be serve as a background for some text that I'm going to overlay on the top of that square. And, um, and what text is basically going to be is a URL to my blog or to my website. And all I'm doing here is just basically taking that square, recoloring it. I usually like blue, uh, and that blue is usually a little gray, so I'm going to uh, tighten it up a little bit by making it darker blue, and then now I'm taking the opacity and making it a little bit more transparent. Okay, So I usually like about 60% 60, 60 transparency. Now I'm grabbing the text from my assets folder, and I'm putting it on top of that and you can see where that lays out in the timeline where they just stack up on top of each other this is what I call what I mean by having a multi-track editor so that way you can overlay other objects on top of your video and you can even overlay audio on top of video uh, that has audio and you can even overlay video on top of video it's really cool so it's a multi-track editor is what, you, what you're shooting for and you can see now all I'm doing here with the text is just basically coloring it up a little bit making the text bigger um, making it white and then kind of centering it inside that little square background that uh, or that rectangular background that I created for it now in the timeline over here what I want to do is not have it start not have my text start right at the beginning of the video so I'm actually gonna have it be at the right five seconds uh, I'm gonna bring and have it start at about the five second point and then I want to stretch it out a little bit for to last about 10 seconds long and that's all I'm doing here 
and then I usually like to have it fade in. So there's this effect called fade in, fade out. I'm dragging that to the front end and I'm going to drag it to the back end as well of each of those objects. And all that's going to do is it's going to cause it to fade in my video or my text. There it is. And then let's let that play towards the end here. There it fades in and we come a little bit towards the end of it here. Let me see if I can get there relatively quickly and then it's just going to fade out. That's a nice little fade in, fade out effect. Okay, that was easy enough. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you here is in the latest version of um, Camtasia, both the Macintosh and the PC version, there is a feature called Captions that actually allows you, and I'm going to select it here and drag it on top of the video in the timeline, and what that does, it brings up a caption track there it is now you can see this uh, what this caption track does is Camtasia automatically splits it up in four second segments and the deal is is you can actually play each of those four second segments and listen to just the words that are spoken in that four second segment and that gives you enough time to be able to type in what you hear from that four second segment pretty slick and there's even some real easy keyboard shortcuts so that when you're done with that I just push the tab button and then that'll take me to the next four second segment that I can then listen to and I can I don't know about you but I can handle listening to four seconds of words at a time and actually be able to keep up with typing all of that when I'm done with this four second segment then all I'm gonna do is push the tab button and that'll take me over to the next four second segment pretty slick now what these captions do is they show up at the bottom of your video as the video is playing so that as you are speaking the words that you're saying actually show up as text in a band at the bottom of the video so people that are might be hearing impaired or might want to follow along what you're saying um, can actually read what it is that you're saying or the words that you're saying in the video uh, but the thing is the reason I do this is uh, is not so much to have the captions at the bottom but actually it's a very easy thing to be able to create what's called a caption file and I'll show you that here in a moment but what this caption file is is basically a text uh, based uh, version of all of the words that you've typed into the caption <laughs> into the captions area uh, and save it out to a text file and that text file you can clean it up a little bit it's gonna have some some of the time codes for some of the text that you've typed so that way you can actually take that caption file and since it's like a, a little a standard in the industry you can actually import that caption file into other software that um, that allows for captioning so um, but my interest is not so much to have those time codes I'll show you in a moment where I'm actually gonna take those time codes and uh, strip them out because what I want to be left with is the words that are spoken and be able to then copy all those words and put that into my blog post and the reason I do that is so that way the search engines like Google, Yahoo and all of these other guys uh, when they go out there and they start indexing for blog posts um, they can find the words that I've spoken in the video and be able to index the text based version of those words alright so that's now what the caption looks like at the bottom of your video so whenever you play it it's just gonna keep showing this little uh, band at the bottom of the video but here's my challenge now is it's right now it's actually overlaying my little URL area where I had the branding for the URL of where my blog site was so it's actually um, superimposing that so it's kinda getting in the way so what I'm gonna need to do is actually move either the captions themselves to another area of the site uh, or move the URL label and move it to another area of the site or actually another area of the video I know I keep saying site I actually mean another area of the video and it looks like actually in Camtasia there is I'm looking but it doesn't seem like there's a way to right now to move the caption to another part of the video frame so we're gonna leave the we have no choice but I'm gonna go and leave the captions there and instead what I'm gonna do is drag both that box and my URL text and move it to let's say to the top of the video because I don't think it's gonna work down and right underneath my chin there so let me grab the text pull it up to the top and then put the uh, the blue band up there as well and see how that all works now ultimately when I publish this I'm probably actually going to take the captions out uh, and instead just basically take all of those caption text and export it out to a SRT file or what's called an SRT file and you'll see why but it's basically a text file that I'll then copy and put into my blog post.
But right now, this looks uh, this looks like a good place to for where I can have my label up at the top. Let me save everything that I've got so I don't lose it here. And then let's take a look at what that is going to look like here. So I'm playing it from the beginning. There's the captions and there's a fade in on my URL. Okay, now the last little bit I want to show you here is how I actually save that captions file. So I've just selected share and captions and you can see it's an SR there's a couple of file formats here. This one's called an SRT file. And all I'm going to do is give it a file name, save it down and um, it just goes through the export process. It's that quick. Let me do the reveal and finder thing and let's take a look at what that looks like in a text editor. So I've got a text editor on my Macintosh here. It's called text edit appropriately enough. See if I can see if I can find it here. And there it is right at the top. So I'm going to click that, open it up. And this is what an SRT caption file looks like. You can see it's a text with the time codes associated with them. And those time codes basically allows you to be able to take this SRT file as a file standard and import it into other software that might be using captioning software capabilities as well. And it'll be able to basically take those time codes in the format that it's in and then know that the text underneath that associates with that time code in the video. Okay. So anyway, so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm basically, I don't necessarily want that because uh, that's not what I'm going to be using it for here. I basically use a captioning feature as an easy way to transcribe the spoken word in the video into text. By the way, the PC version of Camtasia uh, will do this all for you by, um, uh, with an algorithm that allows you to, uh, it'll actually figure it out for you. You can train it to recognize your voice and it'll just basically turn into text the speech that you've spoken in the video. The Macintosh hasn't caught up to that yet. I'm uh, fully expecting Camtasia will, or TechSmith guys who create Camtasia will have that feature available downstream. But for now, right now in the Macintosh, it's a manual uh, process to strip out all of the time codes. So I'm left with just the text that I want and I can format that out. And basically at the end of all of this, copy that and uh, have that be the text for the blog post. So that way the blog post with the video in it can be indexed by Google. Okay, the last little bit here is to export it out to a format that I can use to upload it to YouTube. And I usually like the MPEG-4 or an MP4 file format. So I'm going to give it a file name here. And then in the export field uh, at the bottom here, I'm going to make sure that's MP4 is selected. And then there's some options I like to set. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these options with you here, but uh, I might reserve another video for that. But basically, um, there's some bitrate settings that I like to have and uh, basically gives it a higher quality but also makes for a larger file size as well and there's some things to pay attention to with regards to frame rates and your audio settings and again I'll, uh, I'll post that more in another video uh, or another blog post but uh, once all of your captions are done and your videos uh, edited it's just a matter of exporting it into a file format or you can basically accept some of the defaults in your software that allows you to export directly to YouTube. Once all that's done, you just save it down, wait for a little while. It takes a little bit for that rendering process is what it's called to, uh, to compress everything down to a final video format. And what that does, it burns all of your uh, objects that you put into your video and all the edits that you've made, all the text that you've overlaid on your video and makes it one big video file. And once all that's done, you just basically save it down. It's done here is what I'm going to show you. We'll open it up. We'll take a look at it before we upload it to YouTube, and there it is. It's all done. There's the captions, and there's my overlay. So this is the final video, and all we'll to do after this is done is uh, just export that out and upload it to YouTube. And for that, you'll have to see my uh, <laughs> how to upload videos to YouTube uh, video if you haven't already done that before. All right, that's about it for this one. This is Mel Aclero. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, it's not so much a tutorial on how to do, uh, how to edit video using Camtasia, but rather what it is uh, in terms of the process and some of the steps I go through to quickly get some videos up on uh, edited and then up on YouTube. All right, talk to you later.